Good morning. How y'all doing? I know you are. Happy smiling faces. You got that? So happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Happy day to all you moms. Happy day to all you guys, really, who also have moms. Because the Mother's Day thing is an overabundance, really, of feminine energy. <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, that's what, that's what that is. Some adjectives. Loving, compassionate, endearing, kind, protective, soft, but strong. Extraordinary, intuitive, caring, and mindful, but powerful. There's this book I ran into a few years ago, Power Versus Force. Have you ever read into that when you've seen that one? Yeah, that's a good one. And it's a great example. Guys are like, we're going to make this done. And women are, yeah, you know, go ahead, but I got this. <laughs> and, you know, they do. So to all you women who are mothers at heart. I've seen it. It's interesting to see little girls all of a sudden with a baby and their mother thing comes out. And mothers are an innate way of being in the world through all, all species. I saw this picture of a pig, mother pig, suckling a litter of puppies. You know, it's a mother. It doesn't matter who gets mothered. Yeah, and sometimes mothers smother. <laughs> and then there's a smother's mother's joke in there somewhere, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> and for the guys, real quick, embrace that feminine energy because it is part of what makes us whole. And there is a very big part of that feminine energy that allows us to be a complete human. So embrace it. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Today, this week, this month, we're talking about darkness and light and shadows in between. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> <laughs> we're also going to touch a little bit on trying to unlearn some of this fear of darkness. So there's darkness. And darkness is equated with bad things and evil things. <sighs> Darth Vader. Things that go bump in the night. Count Dracula. We've pictured darkness as evil for eons, forever. <clears throat> Interesting, even devil's food cake is dark. <laughs> Angel food cake is light. I think we've been taught to fear. I think as we grow up, fear is not inherent. It's learned. We fear the darkness. We love our scary movies, as long as it's up there. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't really mess with us at all. Anybody remember The Exorcist? Oh, yeah. Man, that crawled inside of us, upside down, backwards and forwards, scared us. I know people didn't sleep for a week after that, right? But they went back to see it again. <laughs> yeah, so what up with that? What are we afraid of? Again, fears are not natural. Most of them are learned. Folks are afraid of all kinds of things. Some people are afraid of getting a speeding ticket. Some are afraid of death. Wild animals. We're afraid of what other people might think of us. We're afraid of certain part of town and certain parts of the night. And whatever those fears are, at least we can name them. Because many times we're not really sure what we're afraid of. We tend to fear the unknown, the unexplained. We don't like what we don't understand. This also includes people, by the way. That's where racism comes in, in all of its subtle and not so subtle forms. We fear people that look and act differently than us. We're uncomfortable around religions that we don't understand and the people that practice them. We fear new ideas. 
An example of that is Galileo. He shared his excited discovery. Wow, look, you know what? The world doesn't revolve around the earth. Look, it revolves around the sun. Well, that got him excommunicated from the church and hanged. 359 years later, in 1992, he was absolved and apologized to. <laughs> you know, thanks, man. We're good. We can be afraid of a new thought. Jesus was an example of that. I'm not really sure what we were afraid of when we separated the world from Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, and John Lennon. Maybe we're afraid of the idea of peace. And I wonder what scares us about that. Over the course of human existence, as we know, or at least we've heard, fear has been created in certain places in order to control others. Something to fear was created, made up. It wasn't even real, yet we bought into it. And as I like to say, what up with that? So what can we learn by that? Start by observing and then questioning your strange, almost morbid fascination and attraction to the darkness. Why are we so attracted to accidents and catastrophes? I don't want to see that. <laughs> but you do. I think soap operas tie into this too, because that's dark. Everybody doing these things to everybody else. And reality shows, of course. And of course, and, and then that's way out there somewhere. So we're safe from it, but we're still drawn into it. The darkness can be strangely enticing and even erotic, which is, it can be comforting because it's so enveloping and so, well, you know, dark. And it's an interesting dichotomy because we kind of feel safe enveloped in the dark, but there are things in the dark that we fear. Are you aware that physical darkness is generally the fertile space of creation, creativity, and growth? That happens in the dark. Each of us, and everybody out there too, each of us was created in the darkness. Okay, I don't know about the actual moment of creation. I wasn't there yet. But then we spent the first nine months of our lives in the dark, growing our body, becoming form <clears throat> in the dark, wet, comfortable, a womb, a womb without a view <laughs> in the dark. And then, boom, forced down this small tunnel into this light. Well, that must have been a jarring experience. All of a sudden, there's light, and there's noise, and there's people, and there's all kinds of things. That might have been fairly unnerving. We got used to it, though. That became our new normal. And then somehow, we got to be afraid of the dark. Well, that's interesting. What kind of program caused that shift in perception? Come to think of it, if we can survive that process of being born, you'd almost think we could handle anything, right? After that... Nothing, nothing's that big of a deal. What is it about this life that feels so unsafe? Have we become so afraid of what's in the shadows that we don't even feel comfort in the light? Shadow is created by light. So light and dark actually work together. They support each other. This is good here. I'm going to read this to you. We can't really have one without the other. They may seem to operate independently, but actually they're a pair of their own. They have their own traits, and they have their own characteristics. They work together, and they complement each other. Think of the yin and yang symbol. This ancient symbol of harmony and balance challenges the conventional perception that light is good and darkness is evil. 
It shows the two complementary forces that make up all aspects and the phenomenon of life and the interconnected of the world, particularly the national world, natural. Then there can be no positive without negative, no open without closed, no up without down, no light without shadow. The yin-yang symbol portrays that interrelatedness encompassing, encompassing the actual process of the universe and all that is governed by cosmic duality. And you just thought it was a nice tattoo. <laughs> when light shines on something, a shadow is created. What is in the shadow? Or what is that shadow covering up? What parts of us do we actually see in that shadow that we are reluctant to see in the light? And I ask again, what are we afraid of? Work on that a little bit in your spare time. You have to ask that question a number of times and a number of situations in order to come up with an answer that really works for you. And don't be afraid of the answer. It's just an answer. It's something for us to look into. Adding to the list earlier, we we're also afraid of life, heights, closed spaces, different people, speed, unfamiliar places, spiders, the list goes on. So what are these fears based on? Because the fear itself is not real. The fear itself is an emotion based on something else. And that's where we get down and do that work and figure out what that's all about what it's getting triggered. And when that happens to you, when you feel that, how do you act? How are you going to respond to this? You're going to shut down? You're going to back away from it? Maybe walk around it? And then you might want to ask yourself, how does this situation and how does my reaction to this situation support who I envision myself to be? Is this really how I want to show up in the world? A more positive approach would be to address it. Face it right on. Look right at it. <clears throat> and then how can you turn this appearance of fear into something that doesn't really bother you? Give it a name. Try to understand it. Slap a little reality on it. You're not real. How would you rather be in a situation again? We are very powerful creator beings made in the image of Gus. You, you talked about Gus earlier. You remember Gus, right? God, universe, spirit. Gus. Gus is good. If we are to truly believe that we are made in the image of Gus, that we are as Gus is, then there's nothing for us to be afraid of. Really, what's the worst thing that could happen? If we can't control it, then there's nothing we can do about it. And if we can control it, then why worry about it? <clears throat> I'm remembered of, I found this thing. It, it's considered an Irish proverb. And then I saw two guys, this guy, Wolfgang Rebbe and Hannah McMullen, and they've also been credited with writing it. So here we go. I wrote this. <laughs> there are only two things in life worth worrying about. Either you're healthy or you're sick. If you're healthy, there's nothing to worry about. But if you're sick, there's only two things to worry about. Whether you get better or you die. Well, if you get better, there's nothing to worry about. And if you die, there's only two things to worry about. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. If you go to heaven, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> if you go to hell, you'll be so busy shaking hands with all your friends, you won't have time to worry. <laughs> so up to this point, we've addressed stuff that's out there. And we can't do much about what's out there except to manage 
how we react to it. What about what's going on in here? This is something to address. If you want to grow, you got to go in. These inner fears are a lot more powerful. They're sneaky. They're more insipid. They affect us in ways that we're not aware of because, quite honestly, they've become so much a part of who we are that we accept them as who we are. It's just who we are. I'm like this. Well, at least you notice it. If you notice it and you say you're like this and you don't want to be like that, then, then that's where this work goes in. That's what we do here. Deep down inside, we might be afraid of some kind of darkness we don't know about, some long-lost misadventure. That's something that happened many years ago, and if you want to go here, sometimes many lifetimes ago, that is causing a shadow on your present moment. You're afraid of something that totally doesn't make sense. And what that's doing is that's keeping us from being the best version of ourselves. It's not allowing our pure gusness to shine. I found 35 entries in the Science of Mind textbook explaining in various ways that darkness itself does not exist. Think about that. Talk to your scientist friends. There may be a different opinion. But darkness does not exist. Darkness is only the absence of light. You can't turn on the darkness. You can't bring on the darkness. You can only remove the light. So remember that. The darkness is not real. And you, when you know that, then you use your light to remove darkness from your path. There are many different types of interferes that may keep us down. I love this little poem by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Have you ever given yourself a couple of minutes to think about that? I have. Last month we talked a little bit about vulnerability. So I'm going to wander into that in front of you guys today. I'm going to practice. In, during this next step of me building my coaching business, I find myself stepping out into a new environment that quite honestly is a little bit unnerving. I've decided that a really nice pond for me to fish in to do what I do is corporate. I've never really been a big fan of that environment, so I wonder where that idea came from. But we know, right? They come from where all ideas come from. Gus. So why did I even question it? And I remember that Gus does not give us Anything to do or put us in any positions that we can't handle. So there's a little faith there. There's a little trust in the process. That particular pond is causing me a bit of agita. It's a place I'm not real comfortable with. But I believe, quite honestly, that many people and the people that they work and live with would benefit greatly by bringing some of the light to their darkness. So the part of me residing in the shadows whispering in my ear, was that the untethered soul, the roommate, the chatterer, all these things we tell ourselves? I don't know enough. It might be suggesting the corporate people are a different breed, and I'm not familiar with that. It might be an assumption or an interpretation that to play in that arena, I need to be published or certified or somehow otherwise distinguished. There are probably some other hidden messages I'm not aware of that are coloring my perception. But this is what's going on right now. Do you ever feel like that? You wander into a place that's like, hey. but why? I don't know. 
Yeah, I know no one's really going to admit that in public. But you know, finding out it's just the truth. It's like rain. If I, I got a new favorite thing about rain. If I said this, share this with you guys. Who likes rain? Okay, good, a lot of you. Who doesn't like rain? Okay, some of you. Just some of you who like it, not like it sometimes if there's too much? Yeah, right? There you go. You know what? It's just rain. It's just what it is, and we get to decide how we react to it. And I apply that to a lot of things that I'm working on here. It just is, and what a great place of strength to accept what it is that we're looking at as something that just is. Now, how do we want to deal with that? So I do that. I become aware of it. It's just rain. These are only folks. I'm good, right? And by them hiring me, it's good for everybody. Then we jump into the pond. And just trust that you got this. To get back to that Marianne quote, have you ever considered what your life might look like if you actually got to live the vision that you have for yourself? What's keeping you from that? What's keeping you from that nicer house? Or, well, you guys are going on your vacation, see? So nothing's keeping you from doing that. It's a beautiful thing. Good all over you. What's keeping you from whatever it is that you dream of yourself? Why and how are you reconciling where you are now in order to stay there instead of growing into that bigger, grander vision of yourself? There's a fear in there, up underneath those shadows. <clears throat> and if you start looking at it, you can start to see and maybe even understand how we sabotage ourselves to keep ourselves where it's comfortable. <clears throat> Ernest Holmes said, there through the door of our own thought, we enter into universal consciousness. And as we do that, we enter into the complete realization of love and light, life and truth, beauty. What if we tried to explore that darkness? There might be something to do. Only when we explore the darkness will we discover the infinite power of our own light. Remember the yin and yang, both darkness and light are part of our experience. <clears throat> Plants have their roots in dark, and they grow towards the sun. We have our feet planted firmly on the ground, and we grow towards the light. That's our journey. And it's interesting that we constantly look out there to the light when we know we don't have to go that far. Our light's right here. So hopefully, as you do the work, you move some of the darkness out of the way, come to grips with it, and we get closer to that place we call home, closer to the place that we find as our gustness and realize that our light within has many, many layers. The closer you get to the light, the more of your shadow you will see. All right, we covered a lot today. Let me go back over it real quick. <laughs> we look directly into the darkness. We looked a little bit into our own darkness. We realize that a lot of this is based on stuff that we probably just went ahead and made up. We talked about the darkness being nothing but just a lack of light. We can overcome our fears by facing them and shining our light on them. Most of our challenges are self-induced. Probably no surprise. We threw out a couple of ideas in overcoming our fears and made it clear that dark and light are both working together. We can't have one without the other. They each have a place in our lives. We know 
that our thinking is done within, our feeling is done within, our intuition is realized from within, and we have our emotions from within, yet our beliefs are experienced without. See, there's that balance again. What we believe in in here shows up out there. I learned that. I don't believe I'm supposed to be here. Apparently you do. So you learn, and then you use that as a place to start doing your work. Ernest Holmes says, we experience heaven to the degree, to the degree that we become conscious of it. To the degree that we become conscious of it. I think that's a powerful little phrase right there. When we're conscious of it, then we get to control the heaven that we experience. And when we become conscious of it and we stoke our own fire, the darkness cannot overcome our light. Remember, we are very powerful creator beings. Say that with me. I am a very powerful creator being. Now say it like you mean it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I'm going to close with this quote by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the light is out. But when the darkness sets in, their beauty is revealed only if there's a light from within. Be the stained glass window and let your light shine. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. You told me before I was supposed to do a prayer now. Okay. Do a Please prayer. Do a prayer. I forgot. Okay. Do, you, do you want to do it with me? Okay, we're going to lock this in with a little bit of a prayer. If you join me in this moment. <sighs> Knowing full well, Gus. Knowing completely and totally what Gus is and that we are as it is. We are individually and as a group that powerful creator being the darkness is just a thing the light is who we are and when we know that we can embrace that when we know that we overcome that so what I know for everybody here is acceptance of what is and that powerful knowing of who I am am and I know that you take that I am and live the life that you're here to live those messages come from within and we listen to them and we honor them our light shines and it spreads and everybody benefits from it. I know this to be the truth. So as I get this message from Divine Mind, it is my gratitude and my pleasure and my honor to give it back. Planted in the fertile fields, it is the action and activity of the law itself that takes our ideas and grows them bigger and better than we can even imagine. It knows what to do. So I release it to that perfect process that which I trust in and which I accept. And I say this word for everybody here. And if you work with me, lock it in by saying, and so it is. <laughs>